A portion of today's video is kindly sponsored by Neutrogena and Listerine. Y'all know what time it is. It's time for a fresh top shelf. This is a video I do about every six weeks to two months. And it's when I am putting away all of the makeup and skincare items that I've been interacting with for that period of time. And I realize that there are things that if I put them back, I'm just gonna pull them right back out again. And that is what distinguishes them as my top shelf. They stay out because I'm interacting with them so much. So. Let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, so I'm going to start with skincare and actually y'all are gonna be surprised because I have started using a retinol that is affordable, I know. I have in the past, without even blinking an eye, paid over $100 for an ounce of like a custom mixed retinol or something. And I used to think that that was really the only way for me to get results for like the dullness and the like sun damage from summertime and stuff like that, all the hyperpigmentation and everything. Happily, to my surprise, I found this. This is the Neutrogena Rapid Wrinkle Repair Regenerating Cream. This stuff is beautiful, y'all. Retinol is a dermatologist proven ingredient, a very effective form of vitamin A that basically accelerates and encourages your skin's natural process of cell renewal. And the results look like your skin looking brighter when you wake up. So the opposite of that is described usually as dullness. It's like what we see on our skin when we wake up in the morning and the skin just kind of looks gray, right? I have it so badly if I don't have the help of a good retinol. The little like fine lines around my eyes, I have super dry skin. Everything starts to just look really unhappy, <laughs> and, like thirsty, and it makes me feel less confident. Like the last thing I want to be worrying about is my skin when I have so much going on. Everybody does this time of year. It's like as soon as daylight savings hits, everything just accelerates. And I feel like my days, I mean, lovely, amazing, fun things, having a two-year-old family, all of that, great things. <laughs> but I have to really set aside the time in my routine to take care of myself and take care of my skin. And there is no better feeling than waking up to really bright skin. You just feel like you don't have as much to like overcome that day. So this has been the most lovely, lovely formula. And actually before I tried it, I bounced it off a couple of my like most discerning friends because this has been around for ages. They're like, that's a beautiful formula. Definitely try it. And they are so right. Not only is it a very effective retinol, which honestly, dime a dozen. You can get an effective retinol anywhere, but like, is it going to actually like nourish your skin and keep your moisture barrier balance and things like that? Not necessarily. So this has a lot of really great, like hyaluronic acid. It's a creamy, no fragrance formula where you're going to get those results, but you're also going to get like a nice gentle introduction to your skin. And if you are completely new to actives and to retinol specifically, always use an SPF during the day. When you're using an active, it's gonna make your skin a little bit more photosensitive. So I apply this morning and evening. Definitely, like I said, wear an SPF anyway, but always when, we're when you're using an active. And I also have been loving the Rapid Wrinkle Repair Retinol Pro Plus eye cream. So not only, like I said, are both of these unscented, but they gave me results so quickly with minimal irritation or like, you know, noticing that they were there. And that's one thing. It's like, I'm not usually like a proponent of using really specific eye cream, but my eyes are like, if you think about it, when you're in the sun, like the sun is hitting right here a lot. And so my eyes and this really, you know, thin skin right here, it tends to darken more in the sun. And that's also where you start to see those like, you know, it's, it's life. I would I prefer it to the alternative, but if I can minimize those like signs of aging and things like that around my eyes, I'm going to. And the main thing that I noticed with this is like how smooth it made my under, like a lot of times I have this, I don't know, line of demarcation almost between my under eye and my cheeks or, you know, the skin around here where you can tell where the skin texture changes and this just like smoothed it out. And unlike a lot of them that I have had to like go to my doctor and have them mix them custom for me for any kind of purported results, you can buy these on Amazon right now. They're both like around $30. So I was just really excited to share this with y'all because it really hits all the marks for me and the results speak for themselves. And speaking of confidence, I have been 
in so many more social situations already and been invited to so many more social gatherings now that we are finally able to do safe social gatherings. And now that we're back up close to each other, maybe riding public transportation, talking to an Uber driver, talking really close to our family, things like that, fresh breath, is essential. So I have been using the Listerine Fresh Burst mouthwash recently as just an addition to my dental hygiene routine and it has been a game changer for me. My husband has gotten on board with it too and we are a fresh breath force to be reckoned with at the moment. The Listerine Fresh Burst kills 99.9% .9 of germs that can cause bad breath and early gum disease. It has a 99% naturally derived formula and it's made with four essential oils that are inspired by nature. This kills five times more plaque above the gum line than floss and there's just spaces that you can't get with your toothbrush. I hate that feeling of like crud on my teeth after I've brushed and this really solves it. So I encourage y'all to check these out. Like I said, they're available on Amazon. So hit the link down below and you can check those out. And thank you so much again to Neutrogena and to Listerine for sponsoring this portion of today's video. And the oil that I have been putting on my skin prior to applying my retinol is <laughs> an oldie but a goodie. Y'all, this is the Iconolab Renewal Face Oil. I've been using this stuff for years. I've lost count of how many bottles I've been through. This is a small company out of California. All of these oils are handmade and it is just, <laughs> it's just the best, okay? And I find that, you know, during the summertime, my skin kind of like has its own oils to some extent. You know, I can kind of get by here and there, especially because I'm putting on a lot of sunscreen because I'm outside all the time and like, you know, sweat, sebum, I don't know. But man, winter time comes around and my skin is like, oil, we don't know her. So I really have to help her out. And I basically sandwich all my actives in between this. This is the first thing I put on my skin. My skin just like drinks it up and it doesn't inhibit the efficacy of like my actives at all, but it does help to I don't know, it just kind of gives my skin like a head start in terms of hydration because obviously anything that's accelerating cell renewal can cause like, you know, peeling and things like that. So I just, I love this and it's been the thing that's kind of kept everything on the rails and maintained my moisture barrier in addition to the fact that that's actually a cream and not some kind of like really aggressive serum. So I am super pleased with my skin lately and this is definitely not a super affordable product, but like what else is new for me? I do have 20% off down below though. So I kind of love a plus. And another thing, this is a moisturizer that I've been applying throughout the day lately because all of my moisturizers, as much as I love my like crazy, crazy heavy moisturizers, most of them, with the exception of like the Glossier After Balm, which I don't like to wear under makeup because it's like, it's just too emollient. Most of them have some kind of like sting to them. They think that like you need eucalyptus or something like that. And like, I just think that that's really odd for when your skin is sensitized and needs a lot of moisture. Like even my SkinCeuticals, the Triple Lipid Restore 242, has a little bit of something in it. I'm not sure, but it'll tingle. And it's just like not super pleasant when my skin is really dry. And so this has been awesome. So this is the Paula's Choice Rescue and Repair Intensive Moisturizer. And this is part of their Calm collection. It's essentially for sensitive skin or sensitized skin. And I just love it because it's heavy enough, you know, but it's, it still doesn't like get in the way of makeup, but it doesn't have any irritant, none, none whatsoever. It's just this lovely layer of like pleasant hydration on my skin. I'll show it to you. It's just a really nice lotion. It's just really nice. It's got, it's creamy, but it's not super white. It's kind of halfway between a cream and like a gel texture. Oh man, it's real nice. It's real, real nice. And it just is so unoffensive, you know, especially if your skin is stressed out. Like the last thing you need is your moisturizer taking your skin off, you know, so. And loving this. All right, moving into makeup, but we'll move there by way of skin prep. Shocking, exactly no one is my current skin prep duo. The Kosas Plump and Juicy Vegan Collagen Spray on Serum and the Kosas Plump and Juicy Collagen Lip Boost. This is just a great way to prepare my skin for my makeup and things like that. And it's not, again, it doesn't kind of get in the way of the texture of my makeup. It soaks in 
Don't try and apply directly on top of this right when your skin's still wet. Everything will behave strangely. It does need a second to soak in or you can kind of massage it in because it's, it's technically skincare. And after many tries, this is not what I would recommend for setting your makeup. It's still quite skincare-y. It's got quite a, a serum quality to it, but it does plump my skin up and so does this. And again, they're really no irritation, just positivity. <laughs> just like good vibes only, right? That's what these are like for me. And I love that this is in glass. Like the whole situation just feels very luxurious. I'll get my setting mist out of the way, even though it's on the other side of my skincare routine. So oh, my regrowth, my regrowth is so aggressive. I'm finally able to get some of it back up in a ponytail, but it still tries to fall down. I've really moved specifically into Fix Plus Magic Radiance for fall and getting into, you know, winter soon because you know, I'm happy enough to powder a little bit on top of it after the fact, but too dewy is not something that I encounter that often right now because my skin is just, it's totally different in the winter. It's totally different when it gets cold outside and this is like regular Fix Plus when my skin is this dry, you know? So yeah, but mm, it does look nice, doesn't it? All right, let's talk about makeup. Oh my goodness, there are so, there are so many great things in here. I'm gonna try and go in some semblance of an order. We're gonna start with complexion, okay? So the first thing, I just have to talk about this because it's what's on my face right now and I cannot get over how beautiful it is every time I put it on and I'm so sorry in advance because it's the new Chanel. <laughs> it's called Sublimage Latente. I don't know if it's actually, like it's new, but like, I wouldn't be surprised if it's like something that's existed before. I am not, you know, 100% super, versed on everything that's ever existed, you know, in these super high-end luxury lines. I'm pretty new to this whole space, but my goodness is it, look at my skin, look at it. And it's just gonna look like that for the rest of the day. It wears forever, it's beautiful. And it's got a lot of coverage, but it's so pretty. It's so pretty. I don't even really know what else to say about it. It's just really radiant and gorgeous. I did buy this in the shade 10, thinking that it was gonna be the same as B10 from the um, Revitalizing, the number one day Chanel. And maybe it is, it's just got a little more coverage. And so I feel like it's a little bit light for me. So I've been mixing it with this and y'all saw me in my drag queen owned makeup video. When I combine these two, this is the Vita Liberata Beauty Blur. I have it in Latte Light. This combination is such a good like undertone match for me, but it also really enhances my skin and makes it look healthy. Oof, oof. This right here, like this is the one that I can't put down right now because it's like, who doesn't want to look radiant? And honestly, like start with a canvas that looks like that every day. Like this is what the top shelf is about is I, I can't, I really just like cannot say enough about these. I don't know what they did here, but it's so pretty. I have enjoyed so many Chanel complexion products, but this one's my favorite by far far and away. It's, it looks like I have perfect skin, you know, better than perfect skin. And it looks like skin. It's gorgeous. They really did the thing with this one. And if you just get your regular shade, you know what I mean? If you get really well matched, you'll be fine. But if you're like me and you like to be able to kind of manipulate it here and there, there's all kinds of products out there like this that can kind of help deepen your, your foundation or whatever, or adjust your shades. But this one's been a really good match for, for this one, the Beauty Blur. Something that's much more affordable and also incredibly beautiful and I will never shut up about it, but I've gotten back on this recently because we're coming into, like I said, dry skin season. I feel like don't drink, don't drink every time I say dry skin this, in this video, but this is the Rare Beauty Positive Light Tinted Moisturizer. I have it in 14W, it is so gorgeous. It has a beautiful, uh, semi-dewy kind of glycerin look on the skin. It's got quite a bit of coverage and it does build. And that's gonna be the trend here, right? Like, <laughs> I have more stuff in here that that's basically what I'm going to say about it because that's what I want my skin to look like this time of year is like, I want it to give me some coverage because I want my skin to like be a nice even canvas. I do deal with a lot of discoloration, but also I want it to look like skin. I want it to look really healthy and I want to 
be able to kind of like play. I played a lot with my makeup today with like the dimension and the shadow and the light and everything. And I feel like this and the sub homage and the other one we're about to talk about, they all kind of do the same thing, right? I'm, I'm not gonna lie about that. Like you don't need the sub homage Laton, but, uh, but yeah. Rare Beauty, this one's probably going to be the most affordable out of all of them and uh, that I'm mentioning today, and I just, mm, 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 winner, winner, chicken dinner, it's so good. And you know, in the same breath, we can talk about this. So the new reformulation of the Buildable Blur CC Cream from Thrive, it does have the ability to stay really beautiful and serum -y and dewy. I do feel like you can get something a little bit more blurred and a little bit more satin out of this if you want. I don't recommend it for oily skin necessarily, but it does have a little more silicone in it. So I feel like it wears a little bit more lightly and it's not quite, quite, quite as like aggressively hydrating as those other two. And I have this, this is 140, but they sent me 130 and that's been a better match for me. I just, I love this. And the reason that I'm mentioning it now is because the reformulation, they took out octinoxate, so I can actually wear this. So all of these have about like medium buildable coverage. The Sublimage is going to be more radiant. The Rare Beauty is going to be more of that like dewy appearance. And this is going to look a little bit more natural, a little bit more natural and bare powder just a little bit better than the Rare Beauty. But like, and it's got a, mm, that one's got SPF in it too. <laughs> I was like, Sublimage is the one that doesn't have SPF in it, but either way, <laughs> like, you kind of can't go wrong. Back in rotation, concealer-wise, has been the Thrive Concealer and actually the Item Beauty. When I talked about it recently, I was reminded, I was like, I need to get back into that one because I think y'all mentioned it in a this or that and I like pulled it back out and I was like yeah no this one's great and I actually talked about it in my Sephora recommendations video and it's just so good it's what I have under my eyes right now and this is 110 it's just such a good match and this has a lot more coverage than this does I would wear this alone and it like literally looks like skin whereas this is very much like the Tarte creamy shape tape but it's $18 so you know, pretty good. Oh, and in the Thrive, I wear Fair Warm Powders. I have nothing that's going to surprise anyone here. If you've been watching my videos lately, these are going to be the ones that you've been seeing nonstop. Shocking, shocking, shocking. So first being the Make Beauty Diffusion Set. This does have a little bit more coverage. It's what I'm wearing today. And I have found that there's something really nice about having both of these. And I know that that's like kind of a, a bougie thing to say, but like I have light medium and I guess I want to tell people who are complected like me that you can get away with wearing light medium. It's not going to be like orange on you, but also I'm only wearing translucent fair right now. And it's also incredibly beautiful. It's almost like I like to wear the slightly deeper one if I've over brightened my under eyes, but the item beauty doesn't do that for me. The one that kind of does is like this one, the radiant concealer from Charlotte Tilbury because I bought it in such a light shade. I got it in shade two. And so I like to use it to brighten, but I also like to be able to kind of like break up that line that can happen sometimes between, you know, my complexion product and my, my blush and stuff. And so this will really help with that. It's just kind of like a very, very, very light bronzer for me. And so I have been using both of these. And what I like about them, like I said, is that they do have a fair bit of coverage. So I can use them to spot correct and really blend and blur, but they're bright. Look how beautifully like brightening that is and how radiant it is, but it's not sparkly at all. They're gorgeous. They're so gorgeous. All their stuff they say is like skin mimetic, you know, and it really like the word that Hannah used was alchemy. And when it gets on the skin, it just does something you can't explain. They're beautiful. Another one that's like, <laughs> For whatever reason, like I can't put this away. I still am just like, well, but what if I need my Kosas? Because this is the most reliable one. Like it's not super brightening. It's not a lot of coverage. It's just a really pretty blur that doesn't over mattify. And you can see, I mean, I just keep hitting more pan. So, you know, the, the proof's in the pudding there. And then for brightness, if I want to look snatched and gorgeous, but still have a really natural texture to my skin, snatural. I'm gonna go with the House Labs. I love this. It's brightening without being pink. It's 
just so gorgeous. It just, it's just gorgeous. It's got this amazing luminosity to it where it just looks better than reality, but it doesn't, again, like add a ton of coverage. It's like a fluffy kind of powder on the skin and I can put it all over my whole face without looking super, super made up. I like it very much. It really lends itself well to the way that I like to do makeup, which is that when I get done sometimes, I do want to kind of go in and like re-brighten some areas without them looking like shiny. This does that and it's so, ugh, it's awesome. Awesome stuff. She killed it with this. Couple of bronzers, wow. <laughs> Make Beauty just continues to, to knock my socks off. In fact, I think this was the first product that I was motivated to order from them. Like I made a larger order. I ordered a bunch of other stuff with it, but this was the reason. And this is the Skin Mimetic Micro Suede Bronzer in Lunar. And again, Hannah just reviewed Make and I was blown away when she put this on because she is so pale olive. So pale olive, everything turns orange on her. Everything is too deep for her. And she always says that ro it has to be kind of rosy for it to work on her. It can't be, it almost like can't be a real bronzer, you know, like a brand would define a bronzer. It almost needs to be like a weird, like a nude blush kind of thing, like super desaturated. And she put this on and it worked and it was gorgeous. I can't explain it. And the first thing that I said when I opened this up was I was like, that's dark. Like that's gonna be really dark. I'm wearing it today. It's not super dark. You can just pile it on. It's gorgeous and it comes in a ton of shades. So impressed by this. Make Beauty, I don't know what they put in their products, but this is just, the, all their powders are off the charts gorgeous. They just do something magical on your skin. The House Labs has also been a favorite. I love this. It's like a different approach to getting that really lovely, like slightly luminous, better than skin finish without it being like shiny or not a really heavy feeling on the skin. And that is the gel to powder formula that we're seeing. So it picks up on a brush really beautifully, but it's not going to ever stamp it's never going to give you that really cakey look or anything. And it's just this wild suede. I mean, it literally feels like suede when you touch it. It's awesome. So yeah, this one's called the Power Sculpt Velvet Bronzer. It comes in 12 shades. Look at this thing. This is light level one. That color is just unbelievably kind to my skin. It's so fair without being orange or yellow. It's so beautifully neutral. I love it. I love the finish of it. It makes my skin look healthy. And it's kind of that thing where it's like, if my skin needs a touch of something, it's this, you know? Like I just can't put my finger on it. What is it? It's probably this. And oddly enough, I have actually put away my Natasha Denona contour in favor of this lately. This is my little film star bronze and glow that I've had for a long time. This is from Charlotte Tilbury, obviously. and. I mean, I don't really hardly use highlighter at all, and I certainly don't hardly use this highlighter, but the contour in here is kind of a little bronzier. In fact, it's a little bit even peacher <laughs> than the House Labs. This is the House Labs right here. Isn't that wild? So yeah, when I use this to kind of, I always say like shorten my forehead or like fill in my hairline or something, it just looks really healthy and natural, but still gives me like a contoured appearance instead of if there's too much, it starts to look gray kind of thing. And so I have, I've been really leaning on that heavily. For cream contour, I am back on Westman Atelier Biscuit for the exact same reason. It's because it is more of like a bronzer-ish looking contour. That's just kind of where I've been at recently. I kind of just want to overcompensate in favor of my skin looking really healthy. So that's what I've been leaning on lately are these like browns that have a little more richness to them. Let's talk, oh, I forgot because it doesn't really fit into a category. This was such an instant love for me. This is the Monica Blender Blender Cover. I have this in 2.25. This is like not a concealer, not a foundation. It's just a singular complexion product that is super high coverage. And it has the probably largest range of flexibility of like any complexion project, project, complexion product I've ever used in terms of like, you know, you can get a full coverage under eye concealer out of it, or you could kind of put it on on top of, you know, a sunscreen or a skin tint or something and get something that's just going to give a whisper of coverage. It has an 
unexpected finish to it. You can actually spread it out and it'll dry down pretty well on its own and you can powder it. It's not like Glossier Stretch Concealer. It's not gonna give you that like, oh, a touch here, a touch there. Well, I guess it's gonna stay molten on my skin all day. It doesn't do that. It really behaves like a very cosmetically elegant formula, but it just happens to not really commit one way or the other to, you know, being a concealer part of your routine or something like that. It's literally just about like, putting it where you need it and forgetting about it. It's fantastic stuff. Another thing, and this was really as I was battling a perioral dermatitis this month. This was something that I felt very comfortable using on my skin underneath my makeup. And this is the Sikapair Derma Green Solution Tiger Grass Color Correcting Treatment. Not new by any means, but Dr. Jart just sent this to me as part of one of their holiday gift kit things. And it's great. It's got SPF, SPF 30, I wanna say. It's an SPF 30. A mineral sunscreen. It's green, but it does blend really easily onto the skin. I don't feel like it's like super, super green. And it just did a great job of counteracting the actual symptoms that were happening there and keeping, you know, the rest of my makeup kind of out of it because titanium dioxide is really actually very good and zinc oxide are very good for those kinds of irritations on the skin. And also it cosmetically counterbalanced the redness and covered it, which was great. So can't say enough about this. And I hope they still have that kit because this is crazy. I mean, not crazy expensive, but crazy expensive. But the kit was like $65 or $69 or something for this, a full size of the Ceramidin, a full size of the overnight mask and a sheet mask. It was, it's a wild deal. Absolutely insane deal. Okay, let's talk about some blush. I have here four blushes that I feel like are worth mentioning. You know what I mean? It's like, am I using Pat McGrath Flirtatious? Yes. <laughs> Of course I am. In fact, I'm probably going to list like my hair care routine and things like that that I talk about every single time just so that I don't waste y'all's time, but you can check it out. It's like all my Drunk Elephant stuff and everything. And I will still list a couple of like blushes and everything that I use constantly that I just, I've, I've worn you out on, you know? So the ones that have been blowing my mind lately, it's actually, they're kind of combos. So this is the, the new Make Skin Mimetic Micro Suede Blush. This is in the shade Celestial Rose. And it is just this like almost indescribable muted color, right? It's just like rosy, mauvey, muted, beigey nude. <laughs> it's, it's all of it, all at once. And it's this perfect neutral on me that kind of goes a little bit tan. And I'm wearing that right now. And then what I tend to put with it a lot of times, if I'm going for that really beautiful, like flushed cheek look, because believe it or not, this is going to wake this up in a really sheer wash. It's just going to give this pop of warmth that it just works. So that's when I'm working with something a little bit cooler on my eyes. And then when I'm working with something very peachy like I did today, it's this combo. So it is that same Dior Rosy Glow, except this one is in the coral shade. This one's new to me and I love it so much more than I ever expected to. I really thought it was going to be very extreme and it's just not. It's so awesome. It's so pretty. And then this is the Makeup by Mario Creamy Peach. Again, kind of a muted version. So you use this and then you use, you know, a little bit of a pop of that. But when I got this on today, I was like, that's a little bit much. You know, maybe I need to add a little bit of complexity. And I actually used the make back on top of the two peach shades. And that's where you see it kind of bridging between my bronzer and my blush is this. Amazing, right? So. It's nice to be able to simplify down my routine sometimes, especially when I can get really in the weeds. Talking about color theory, like this really sums it up, those two combos. I have also been really enjoying the Makeup by Mario Ethereal Eyes palette, but their team is sending me another one because of my squishy, my squishy shadow. So you'll be seeing more of this soon, but uh, it'll be it'll be a fresh one, or at least I'll switch. I don't know if I can switch the actual shadow out. I asked if they could just send me a pan, 
but they offered to just send the whole thing. And I was like, okay, I love this. I did get a funky weird one here, this like funky putty thing. Let me know if that happened to anybody else, but I adore this. I think it's really lovely. And I have some like one and dones and toppers that y'all know I don't ever use anything truly as a one and done, but these are the ones that I've been focusing my like entire look around lately. So I have been liking the pop shots. They are top shelf right now because I'm reaching for them a lot, but not because I necessarily think that they're like the best version of what this is, the Charlotte Tilbury hypnotizing pop shots. It's hard to get them to wear for a long time. Alone on me, they just don't wear for very long and I want more stick, but I do find that if I uh, do some work, you know what I mean? Use a primer or use like a cream shadow underneath, they will wear all day. But on their own, like I have to always give that caveat. They're expensive, you know? And I will be kind of like hunting for dupes for these because they're so gorgeous, but I wish they worked better. What I have on my eyes today is this. So YSL had this two for one on lipsticks and I bought two lipsticks and tried them. In fact, I bought three. And the one that I paid full price for is the one that I like the best. I'll show that to you in a second. And I also paid full price for this. And it's just great. I like this so much. This is the Sequin Crush in 06. It's awesome. <laughs> it's this like incredible peach color that is really not like anything else that I've ever seen because it doesn't have that like super trendy wet look to it. Instead, it's like a metallic with glitter on top and it makes me really happy. Like it's got a lot of glitter in it and as you kind of spread it out, it gets even glitterier and that's what I have on my eyeballs right now and unlike those pop shots, man, this builds. It sticks, it builds, it wears all day. It's so, it's so satisfying. Like I just kind of can't stop putting it on. And now that I've tried it, I wanna try all the colors because it's really, really good. So I like that one a lot. And then I've also been using this quite a bit. So this is a gift from Amanda. This was a gift from Amanda and this is Lithium. I'm like the last one to know on these moon dust eyeshadows from Urban Decay. I was a little disappointed. Urban Decay did a big like two for one or something on all their eyeshadows, all their singles but not their moon dust singles, just their regular matte singles. And I was like, well, that's BS. Look at this, look at this thing. Look at this thing. <sighs> Sorry, I had a moment. It's so pretty. Oh, and it's like that ultimate bedroom eyes, but like with a little bit of a twist to it because it goes touch a touch green on the shift. Yeah, as far as like, you know, the closest I get to a one, one and done shadow, it has to have quite a bit of pigment to it. I don't love just wearing a topper on its own. And so that's why I like these is that they have their own presence and they can just kind of stand alone and I can build a look around them. And then, you know, my orange blossom from Kaja. There are so many things, I always say this, but there are so many things that are trying to overstate the purpose and the importance of something like this. And then Kaja comes in and they're like, it's not that hard. We did it already, okay? And we made a, a gazillion of them of different color colorways and color families and everything. Like stop overcomplicating it. We already did it. And I think Orange Blossom is the best example of that because we have my bedroom eyes brown, one of the most exquisite, complete like slam dunks of like uh, Orgasm X and just the most beautiful ethereal ballerina pink. And each one of those is a look in and of itself that just doesn't stop giving, okay? It just doesn't stop giving. They're just utterly gorgeous and they're all super duper wearable. Oh man, do you see this? This is actually really cool. You know how I always complain about when a shadow is so slick, like it'll be a beautiful, beautiful color, but it'll be so slick that you can get it to go on your finger, but you can't get it to come off your finger and onto your skin, like onto your eyelid. Look at how, when I just swatched that on my hand, how much of it came off of my fingers. Like there's barely anything left. That's what I'm talking about. That's results. That makes me really happy. Okay, home stretch here. We're gonna talk about, oh, I wanna mention this really quickly. Eye primer, I just talked about how, you know, those pop shots and everything, a lot of things have been really, been helped by an eye primer recently and this has quickly become the star of the show for me. So this is the Kaleidos Tone Activator Eye Primer. It's just really nice. It's not super silicone-y. It's not very like thick or, I don't know, it doesn't make things drag. It looks like that. It just kind of looks like a really thin, peachy color corrector. It has a fair bit of coverage, which is nice. So it lays down a nice even finish. 
you know, a canvas to start on. And I really feel like it very noticeably extends the wear time and the like impact of my, my eye makeup without making it more difficult to put it on, you know? These eyeliners have made it back into rotation. So this is the Persona eyeliner. This happens to be the bronze one. This I am wearing this today. I think that this one's just so unique in its shade because it's kind of like a copper brown and it's turned me into a waterline person because it wears forever. It's just this really amazingly long wearing formula and it's like this beautiful like gel texture and this color is just absolutely gorgeous on brown eyes. So beautiful. It, I feel like it richens a smoky eye without closing my eyes off the way that like a black eyeliner would or even a brown eyeliner would. Like it's just such a good waterline color. And then as far as brown goes, I really can't beat this. I, I have a lot of them, but like this is the one that gets the most love. It's getting shorter and shorter. This is the Victoria Beckham Cocoa Eyeliner. And it's just that beautiful like gel texture again. Oh, it's so richly pigmented. That's the thing that, you know, I just don't get from other things. I, I do love the LH Cosmetics ones. I do love the Persona ones, but like, mm, it's that rich pigment. It's the fact that as I spread it out with a brush, it doesn't get patchy and it stays manipulable and then it dries down and it wears all day. It's awesome. It's really good stuff. So yeah, I feel like the Victoria Beckham after trying now lots of eyeliners and been, I've been in kind of a, an eyeliner like journey recently. That is the pencil that just keeps winning the day. I have two brushes to talk about here really quickly. These are both new from BK. She extended her core range and there's different and then there's different for a reason, and these are different for a reason. So this is the 112, and it's fantastic for like cream blush. It's very, very like soft and fluffy. And so it disperses things really evenly, but not really heavily. You know what I mean? Like it's not going to, it, it's small. You would think it was gonna like concentrate something. It doesn't. It kind of spreads out on the skin and it gives you this really diffused application. And this one is like, Y'all saw me. I mean, still got the eyeshadow on it from my drag queen video. So this is the 209. What a cool little brush, y'all. Look at the shape. So that's it sideways. I don't know if you can see that, but it's like, it's flatter than, it's fl flatter than what khaki? It's flat, but it's long and kind of narrow. And then it slopes like this. So you have almost a little point right here. So it's just the best shape to like pick something up and get it in the right place without a lot of fallout that you might get from a shorter brush, but also it's gonna be able to have more control than something that's like fluffier than this. And that point right there is just so clutch. It's so clutch. I love this thing. And finally we have lip products. I have three of them here and I know, well, no, I have four. I just reapplied one of them and set it down. Shocking, shocking. I know the Love Potion Lust Gloss from Pat McGrath. It's like, it's the one, it's the sexiest one. Always. There are tons and tons of these, but this is the sexiest one. And it's the one that I just can't stop reaching for. I applied like four different lip glosses today and just kept wiping them off because what I knew I wanted was this. And this was where I landed. It makes me really happy. And I'm wearing my khaki lip liner with it, which Carla Rockmore was using recently on her daughter and it made me really happy. I was like, oh my God, I'm in the hands of Carla Rockmore and Ivy Rockmore, it made me happy. Okay, so yeah, this, has shocked me so much how much I use it. So this is the Happy Kiss from Charlotte Tilbury. I wear this to bed. It's like the thing that I reach for every single time my lips are chapped and it's so awesome because it wears for freaking ever. This is crystal and it's like a clear pink basically. It's so pretty. It looks like a really luxurious lip gloss when you put it on, but it wears like a really effective lip balm. I love it. I love it. And it's got super, super staying power. I won't wear something overnight if it doesn't. It's got some, it's got some real tenacity to it. I have <laughs> fallen back in love with this. Again, one of y'all asked about this compared to something else in my this or that video recently. And as soon as I put it on, I was like, ah, why did I ever put that back in a drawer? Don't ever let this leave my sight again. This is the Westman Atelier Squeaky Clean Liquid Lip Balm in Nana. And it's just, the best. It's like this beautiful beige that goes a little bit lavender on me. And it's like, it's just the prettiest. If I were wearing 
a more cool toned look today, this would have been what I went for. It's just so beautiful. It's so beautiful. And they do have another shade that's kind of like this. It's called Garçon. And it's just going to be a more saturated kind of deeper plummy color of it for the same effect for deeper skin tones. And I just feel like, man, you know, she just nails it. She understands that her prices are high and I feel like she never sells it short on colors. The shades are always just dialed in. There's a reason that they exist. So I love this stuff. And finally, this is kind of a spoiler. The The video, I haven't really figured out how to like package it yet, but it's like, I'm gonna be doing a full face of makeup that's all of like holiday releases and stuff. So it's like little sets that I've gotten or things that were, you know, specific holiday colors or formulas or whatever. And I'm also going to be opening all of the advent calendars that were sent to me, which I think I only have two right now, but still, that's a lot. That's a lot to open. That's a lot to put in a video. For that, I bought this and it has stolen my heart. This is, that new holiday shade that I was talking about in the YSL, what's this called? Rouge Volupte Shine. I'm not even gonna bother. I know that that's not how you say it. This color is so good. This is my first time trying a YSL lip color and I've just been really, really been wanting to try this super shiny kind of balm that they do. This is just off the charts. This color is made for me. I saw it on the models and I was like, yep, that's, that's, this is the closest I come to wearing red because if it's got that kind of like, <laughs> I don't know, like red tea kind of thing going on, like that's the color that flatters me as far as wearing something close to red. It has to be kind of this desaturated. I don't know why, it just makes me think of tea. Why does it make me think of tea? I don't know. Either way, it's this beautiful kind of like sheer burnt red that doesn't go orange per se, but it's also not pink at all. It's awesome. It's so beautiful. And it doesn't wear for very long, but it's super easy to apply without worrying too much about it because it's pretty low pigment. And I like that when it wears off, it doesn't leave any like weird, it, it wears off elegantly. It doesn't leave a weird stain or a ring or anything like that. It's just a really lovely lightweight balm. It's kind of like an anti-lipstick for people like me who just don't love wearing a really like high saturation lipstick. It's just a beautiful, luxurious balm. The one thing is it smells like watermelon candy. And that doesn't linger for me. And once I got used to it, I got used to it and it was fine. But like, man, it's a little weird at first. I'm like, why does it smell like that? Why is it spicy? All right, so that's my top shelf for the fall, y'all. Those are the things that I cannot stop using. I don't wanna put them back in a drawer or into a box or something because I know I'm just gonna go have to dig them out again. And keeping them out just makes my life easier. So I hope that y'all enjoy this. And I hope that you will also check out Neutrogena and Listerine down there in the description. I will leave a link down below for you to check it out on Amazon. Thank you again to Neutrogena and Listerine for sponsoring today's video. And if you did like this, please do give it a thumbs up, comment, subscribe if you have already made it to the end of the video and you have not already subscribed. I will leave my playlist of all of my other top shelf videos right here for you to enjoy. I love you all so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye.